Dog. Why are you hate the voice? No, 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 yeah, yeah, you should, bro. Hey, listen. You know, I hate Welcome that back to the Four Missing Pieces, baby. It's your girl, Jen. <laughs> Tell you know them. What I'm saying? It's your boy, Sammy. It's your girl, Ebbs. Someone said it's the morning, please. <laughs> 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 uh, Sammy, Sam, you're in bed with me. Uh, this, this is when the alcohol touches That's you. That's the lotion in our way. You see yeah. Yeah. You see when you're bought in here? And you got to go to the corner, but we just got chats in the corner. Yeah, you're babe. That's what you like. That's how you're feeling, yeah? Yeah, you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm happy with Bantley right now because it's really good because we know that, that right now is a pretty like I won't use the word dark because I think that's a bit of the wrong term sensitive. to use but it's a quite a very sensitive, sensitive time yeah. mm-hmm. that yeah. I'm trying to say it's good to have good energy yeah. right now but I feel like the energy I've been seeing on social media especially mm. I don't want to say it's negative because like it's it's a positive thing that's happening yeah that's happening but it's so sad that it has to happen like that we still have to fight for our rights like it's still have to fight for us to be heard and oh, I also I mean. feel like it's extremely sad that it took a death of somebody for everyone to kind of wake up again. Yeah. It's not kind of like, it's not like everyone was sleeping, but I don't think it was acknowledged, it was acknowledged as wide as it is now. Yeah, and yeah, I so. feel like the fact that till up until this day, I haven't had the balls to even watch the video. Yeah. Because it's, I feel like it's a very sensitive thing to watch. Mm. And it's like someone's death. Yeah. Literally is the reason why we're even sitting here talking yeah. about it. Do you get it? So... For me, it's like, it's a very, very sensitive subject. I was even telling Sam that even though people have been dying before George Floyd, mm-hmm. I feel like George Floyd's death is a bit, it has sparked something different in us, in us people as a whole, and black people as well, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? I just feel like there's something, like, I don't know what it is, but I just feel like something different is coming. Like, we'll just take it. I, I feel like now everyone's doing their bits on the side doing what they can it's gonna bring a change and we should stay positive do you know what i mean even though people feel like protests aren't working we're doing something if you can't protest you can do donations you can do petitions i've been doing petitions like like i'm applying for a job Uh, honestly honestly, anything i'm just like yeah click for top and what i've realized now is that we have to petition on the parliament website and not Mm -hmm. um, the change.org one because now they're not taking that into consideration also heard the change.org is mainly for america it's not really british based so you have to go is it yeah Yeah. because a lot of it is for changes in america and studies and stuff like that yeah whereas the petition one the government petition is the one that's based here in the uk so oh, yeah, I, I have, I have a question for everyone. Has anyone experienced some type of racism? To be honest, I think this for me was also a sensitive subject because it um it brought me back mm. to a time where it was very. It, I actually I was basically there was he was literally directly racist to me, right. but I didn't notice it because obviously I was a bit younger. Would, okay, but um now that i look back on it i realized that was actually racism and if i actually took it a step further what did you do you're saying um, basically it was in school i was in like the craziest thing is i was in year 11 mm. or year 10 one of them and um in our history because i was in set one for history my class um set one, you know? <laughs> i was Bang very passionate way. about Come history on. um because i was in set one for mm. history um my teacher was actually a south african but she was white um right but because if you live in a city like Bristol, Bristol has the higher up side of Bristol and the lower side of Bristol. Yeah. I was from Eastern. Eastern is kind of like classes to get it. And a lot of people in my class were from like Clifton. Clifton is more like, they say it as like Elite. the richer side. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like class is the whiter side. You were in Cab? I didn't go to Cab, I went to Fairfield. Okay, fair enough. So I went to Cab first, but I went to Fairfield High School. So what what, what it was was that um, my head teacher at the time, or my head of year actually, yeah, he was my head of year. Mm. He was them head of years that wore suit and wore Air Maxes because he wanted to be able to, right. to, to to mix with the crowd. Not to diverse his outfit from. Yeah, yeah, but he was a white man, but he wore yeah. obviously Air Force to mix yeah. with the crowd. And I remember literally it was my brother that said to me, do you know what, like, we can make it into a big thing, but we probably ain't going to cause much. But maybe I should have done it at the time. But yeah. literally, it was a disagreement between me and another student in the history class. Yeah. And then my head of year got involved and he said, but at the end of the day, you're black. So it doesn't matter. You guys chose to be, um, you chose to sell your people. You chose to live the life. Wait, is that what he said? Yeah, that's what he said. And obviously, I'm not going to lie. Back in then, I was very short-tempered. Yeah. So for me, when you started coming for me like that, I started to get aggressive. But me, it was like, 
are you mad? Who are you talking to? So for me, it was a thing where I was like, I wanted to attack you. Not attack you by words, but attack you physically. Because I was thinking, who are you to talk to me when the reason why you wear MS is on your feet is because you want to be black. You yeah. talk to us like bruv and yo, because you want to be black apparently. That part of that culture, aren't it? Yeah, be a part of our culture. And then yeah. you're trying to tell me that I am the, I am the way that I am because yeah. of the colour of my skin. Mm. And a lot of the time in school was... If he was black and you were smart, yeah. they would want to wanna applaud you and slap you on the back and they will big you up because mm. I got moved from schools because they said to me, we can't kick you out and put you in like the centre in London, but in um, Bristol, it's kind of like the bad bro school where you do like ice skating for GCSEs with... Um, Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. Talking about like ice skating for GCSEs? Yeah, they made you do some mad things. So they Wait, said, ice skating for GCSEs? Yeah, like people got digging. So like when I go in for a job and I ask you, what's your GCSEs? Say <laughs> so ice skating. Yeah, it was like crazy that things. That is mad. So you got GCSEs for that. But with me, that was like, because we did like a, I think it's called a cat school or t- something like that in school. No cats? Yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah, you had to do a cat school. <laughs> And I had one of the highest, but obviously I came from a black poor area right. of the class that I have. So because I got one of the highest, they said to me, rather than us kicking you out of school and sending you to like the centre, which mm. you guys call it in London, they just transferred me to another school so that I'm able to leave school with the grades and not be the typical. So it was like, that was my first time I've actually experienced some kind yeah. of racism. And I was so angry. Like they, head teachers got involved. I was like, I'm not letting this go. This guy needs to get removed from my school. I, read, I was ready to put on socials and everything like that. And then they had to do that, the whole meeting thing. And my mom is the type of person where it's like, she doesn't like all of that. Wahala. Wahala, all of that problems at her doorstep. Mm. She just finds it like too much. And she can't take them type of things. Mm. So she's just like, look, the guy started crying in it. My head of year, he started crying because he realized that this is it. Like my career can be gone, isn't it? Mm. So he literally, I said to him, I said to him, no, the lady said to me, get him to write your worded apology and everything. And like literally from that point on, he walked on eggshells. Like if I said, I want, I don't want to go to my last lesson. He would approve me not going to my last lesson because he realised that anything that I do, if I press charges, he's actually going down for racism. Yeah. So that was actually the first time I ever encountered it. So then ever since then, I've been very, very vocal about how I feel mm. I'm in my workplace. And I've always been a minority everywhere. If, if I'm not a minority, I'm the only female. So in a lot of the places that I've been in, I've always kind of felt some sort, some sort of prejudice or something like that. So I've always been very, very cool. So this for me was like a big wake up call to a lot of things that I feel like, imagine if I vocalized it, what it could have added to mm. kind of like the situation that we're going through. So that's S- for me. Sam, are you? Yeah, I think that's a very, very big point that you said right there because it's like me, myself, and my for certain situations. And I had this conversation with, 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 with my boy um, and it was like, if you're in a space where you're the only black person and the only person of colour and your peers that are all white are asking you, have you experienced racism? That itself can be quite a... Intimidating. Intimidating and very condoning question. Yeah. Because it's like, you now have got... Because you, you might not have had an experience where someone's called you a nigger mm-hmm. or where someone's like slapped you in the face because you're black or like that I'm matting and said you're black. But, but, that, but that atmosphere you're in, it just feels like in, in it, it's, it's the, and the thing, the thing is, the, and the thing is, it's like when you talk to them about mm-hmm. your experience, that might be covert. It might be, what well, won't be in your face, very like passive. Do you know what I'm trying to say? They'll be like, that's not racism. Da, 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 da. And straight away, they've, in, they've invalidated your situation because they've now got you thinking, maybe it wasn't, maybe this, maybe. And it, it, it makes you doubt yourself and your experience. And like you said earlier, it makes you not want to talk out mm-hmm. anymore because you're thinking, I mean, no one wants to stick to my neck, so mm-hmm. I guess it wasn't that bad. But whereas I feel like what this movement is doing is actually empowering everyone to say, you know what, whether it was covert, whether it was in your face, whether it was the police, whether it was the workplace, whether it was your school, like, talk up and be empowered. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah. Like, like, say your piece. Like, it matters. Because one thing that I will say, I'm not going to lie, 100%, the UK is not as bad as the US. We can all say that mm-hmm. on our chest. Mm-hmm. However, the UK is bad. Very. See what I'm trying to say? Like, it, it's more covert yeah, and passive. Feel, yeah, as you said, I just feel like, because the UK is not as bad, doesn't mean we're not racist. Mm-hmm. Where? They're not yeah. racist. Oh, they're not yeah. racist. Not, doesn't mean that the UK is not racist because we're not as bad as the US because police are not going there and, you know, beating them with bats or, like, threatening them with shooting them. Doesn't mean we're as bad as that. I think, like, because that's a lot of things that people like to say on Twitter, for example, that we're not as bad as the UK. But it's just the fact that the gun, the gun law is, is not passed here. If they had yeah, right to have discreet. guns here, trust me, they would be having guns on our necks. There's so many, there's so many examples on YouTube, on Twitter, and social media where 
somebody has been stopped because they're black. Okay. Like racial profiling is a real thing. There was a video very recently that I saw in which um someone was recording the officer and the officer said, Listen, in this area we don't see many black people. Right. And, and when and when they are here, it's, it's drug dealing. Right. So we, we stopped you because you fit that fit that but d- you know description. What? I That's found hilarious. So bad, it's like right. you're saying, okay, they're drug dealing, but you why don't you go to people that are also going there to buy the drug? Exactly. There's a black person that's the minority in your area, but the people that are living in the area are the one that's purchasing the drug. Are they not just as bad as the person that's selling no, it? No, but that's my issue. It's because they go through it with the law in it. It's the, with the intention to sell. But I, I, the I intention was to different. sell is the intention to buy. Are we not still doing something <laughs> that's wrong? But the thing is, that yeah, you're buying true. the drug, you're selling the drug. What difference is it? They were, they, this, this, are we not all making money from but it? But it's them, it's the drug dealers who are making the, co- the community corrupt. It's not the people. Because you, you're selling it and the people are accepting it. Accepting it doesn't mean that the people who's accepting whole, it is no, bad. I get your you point, but I saw that still both still... sides are bad. But the thing is, though, this, I mean, two wrongs don't make her bad, literally, that's it. Two wrongs don't make her bad. Two wrongs don't make her bad. Right. But the thing is, though, now the thing is, though, I gave I gave this analogy in it. Like, if you've got upstairs in the bathroom, yeah, you've got a tap running, right? And that tap is overflown and it's now sinking to like, the bottom floor of the corridor. If you walk in the house and you're just using a bucket to like empty out the, the um empty out the uh the water, what good what what good is, is that doing? You need right. to go back to the source and stop the tap. Mm. And I feel like all this like persecuting black boys and persecuting like your local drug dealer, which obviously there is some good in doing that. I'm not gonna mm. deny that. However, you're not stopping the plug. The plug is someone in Colombia. The plug is some white man in Amsterdam, Stockholm. But like, they can't go and get that plug in but Amsterdam uh, or Stockholm, though. But, but they, they have to prosecute they trying, people though? in the UK. You can't go abroad and now. Hundred percent. But how about you? No, no, but hundred percent. But the thing is, I get though, what you're saying. Go to the root of the problem. But there's but there's, there's, there's plugs in the UK. Like I won't say no races, but no no races like race like people. Well, oh, race, no. Yeah, wait, 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 but like there are people of a certain race who are providing drugs to the black community. Yeah, of black course. Black people yeah. are not making cocaine. Black people are unimportant to the UK. There are people who are doing that, and obviously they're there from that person. For me, it's like, don't come and say black boys sell drugs or like you're black, cool, because white people sell drugs, Turkish man sell drugs, yeah, but Asian it, man it sell drugs. It's more to the stereotype for a black person, though. Anyway, That's why they anyway, all, yeah, especially yeah. when you come to an area of full like of like jammy areas that that's got a high crime rate and you just see a black person there in a nice car but they're like what are you doing there what do you do but it's because they don't expect a black person to live up go. to that it's lifestyle it's a stereotype it's a stereotype. A stereotype like I know a lot of people they've been stopped by the police they don't just because they're driving a nice car and they're young they're like Hey, we need to stop you because you must be selling some sort of drugs for you to. Okay. It's like we're not allowed to have good things or look. Yeah, a that's what away. I was telling and my that's friend. That's my problem with. That is with, so mad. With everything that's going on, it's like with black people, we technically sometimes we have to walk on the eggshells. We go into workplaces, they're telling us because of the way our hair looks, we can't wear it to work. But exactly. if you wear straight weave, we look like them. But exactly. when we have our own natural hair out, apparently we're all like it's unprofessional. All of these little, it's unprofessional. It's called have you seen? I'm so sorry. I've seen certain hairstyles for people in high places here in the UK. And Boris thinking, Johnson, <laughs> and I'm thinking, Exhibit A. is that is that? Yeah, this, is that doesn't Boris Johnson brush his hair? Sorry, we need to know about that <laughs> no, because really, his hair is not appropriate code. for for the Parliament. Right. Okay, it's not appropriate. Yeah, it, brush it. It's really sad, and Sorry. I feel like, and that's the thing. And and the other day, I was even speaking about. It, I said, you know what hurts me the most is knowing that a lot of I was watching weirdly. I'm still on topic, but I was watching Laura London and um, Jada Pinkett on red, red, talk. red oh red they have talk. one is that recent yeah and she was talking about how she needs to tell her eight-year-old son about the police yeah imagine a child is eight years old and they're thinking that the police, the police that's meant to be saving them, them yeah. is the one that may likely actually put a bullet, bullet in them. Yeah, and yeah. that's when i realized that do you know how sad it is that and it's true many young many mothers many mothers especially here in the uk yeah i've always told the son don't wear it just a certain way or yeah. don't look a certain don't way because they might think you're a thug or you're a drug mm-hmm. dealer and they already know where your life is going to go a lot of the time, like even weed, for example, weed is seen, and especially in the African community, is seen as like if you're on you're smoking weed, that's mm. it, your life is finished. finished. Yeah. Um, and that's literally because they see that if you smoke weed or whatever, it means that associate the police will think yeah, you're a drug dealer, and that's it. Yeah. Your life is over, and it's sad. And this is the reality that we live in. The reality that we live in is that literally everything that we do, you need to be careful because someone mm. that's meant to protect us, technically the police or the government, turn mm. around and say yeah. we're unprofessional or what a threat. Mm. Just like with the protests, now we're all the the, the statues are all being yeah. covered up. Mm. But these were the people that were selling our people. Mm. Regardless, yeah, you can say, oh yeah, but technically they sold us. No, they played us. 
and we fell for it and that's the reason why we live the repercussions that we're living and it's with. so mad that the life for white and blacks are so different because so i different. know a white parent a white parent don't have to talk about those things social things that a black person has to go through a black boy has to go through it, and girls go through it through it as well maybe not Maybe in different no, ways from boys. We go through. I feel like we go through it the same. We go through it the same, but differently. Yeah, because we go through it with people hating us for hair, how we your look, beauty, your features, look, your, your body. Hair. The I'm one that really, the one that really got to me is like, why do you have the right to tell me what I can do and can't do with my hair? It re- like a couple of days ago, I really looked at my skin. I was just like, why are people so mad that you don't like dark skin babes? That you don't like us wearing braids? That you don't like us doing this? It's like, what's your personal beef with it fair enough that's your preference but you don't need to go on and on about it exactly. you don't need to go on and on about my skin whether oh you like a light his skin girl or you like this like you I've, say your preference once and you move on i've told myself and i think it's something i'm gonna tell tell my kids is that we must be a threat a big threat that people actually walk on eggshells yeah when they see like i'm not gonna lie you guys talk about we've got big lips but i see people overlining their lips exactly to to look like us um, it's well so funny well how talks, you're trying to do features to look like a black person but you don't want to walk in a black person's shoes and i realized there was some people on twitter where there was a lady i think her name's like elaine mm. or something that does like a um she did like an experiment in a room she went to like a university and she said um she asked the people like do would you want to walk in a black person's shoes and they all kind of said no. Oh. But <laughs> how are you? Why are you saying no if you Bam. if you don't know what goes At on? At least you got a choice to say no. We have to do it every day. Exactly. Like, and that's my point. And it's not even it's not even bad. It's it's people who are racist that make it bad for us. Living my black life is fun. I tell you that for free. I love it. Have but it's you guys, the system ignorance. that make it so hard for me to be black. Have you personally experienced racism? You? Me? I feel like I don't. Have, I don't feel. I, I'm so. Do you, want to, do you want to talk about this question? I don't feel like we should ask that question. In my opinion. Oh, why not? You asked, you asked you already. I think yeah, yeah I'm to. Oh, okay, okay, you. I with me, like, I think mine's a bit different. I not direct racism like that because I I went to school in North London and the school I went to, I would say there was a lot of black people if I wasn't wrong, and then you have the few white people here and there. But I would say we experience racism differently with sets. So, for example, the people that they saw as disruptive or as bad, they wouldn't have... Yeah, (laughs) exactly. They will put you in set five. They wouldn't put you in the highest set because of your potential, but they will look at your behavior, put you in the lower set or put you in the half warehouse instead so they don't have to deal with you. They can just give you work to do. You do it on your own without any help. So I would say maybe they call that, I think microaggression, don't they yeah, call that? So I would say that's the type of racism I would, I face through like, you know, education system and through that. Like that's, yeah, I would say the most, but then I hear stuff from my friends and. We'll go, we'll go yeah. on to that. Actually, That's what we're talking about. Racism. Right, yeah. It's racism everywhere yeah. I've been. To you, I ain't f- probably ain't experienced direct. I feel like, um, so prior to starting the nuts, I went to uni in America. And when we was there, mm. there's people from all over the place. So uh, there's a couple of us that are from, shit, my bad. Um, there was a couple of us from London. There was a couple of us from Scotland. Mm. People from um, Australia. People from Norway. Like all over the gaff, innit? And someone was from Nigeria even, innit? We got there. Mm. Cali was nice, innit? It was in California. It was nice, innit? But then obviously I feel like some parts of it, you saw the white side and fam, yeah. if they try to speak to us, you know behind behind the scenes they're talking about us, like, why are you hanging out around this person? Mm. And um, also in kind of where we were at our uni, yeah. there was a rodeo team in it, so they're like, and horses and all that, they're jumping around, whatever. One of them, he actually wanted to socialise with us, like us black people, see like, what, what, how we chill and all that. Mm. He came back to his lot, all we heard was rumours saying, ah, oh, why are chilling those black people, they did this, they did this, they did this. All of us were just like, bruv, he's just coming to chill, like, what the yeah. hell? So then um, I feel like in that circumstance, we're just like, bruv, we ain't done nothing. We ain't said nothing. We ain't done whatever, whatever. Why are we getting treated different? That's, right. I feel like indirect racism, I probably felt more than direct. direct but yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, th- I have, sorry, okay. do you want, okay. okay. Sorry, you know when people say, oh, like, oh, we should fund the black community and we should do more for ourselves and stuff like that. What What do you think about that? I, I, I think um, there's something I've discussed with her many times and I feel like, um, there's something that Dr. Umar says. I don't agree with 100%, but I'm going to say what he says. Is there a book called, like, Dr. No, Umar? Dr. Umar. No, no, Dr. Who, Umar. Have you not known him? I've, known, I've heard of him. No, but him. there's something he says. <laughs> but not, I haven't done in-depth, so for no, people who don't Insta. know. No, no, it's an Insta video. And I'm not saying that he's 100% about everything, everything he preaches, but there's one thing he did say. Mm. He was like, a lot of the problems we face for, of today as a black man or black woman is due to the white system. Yeah. Whether it be colonialism, the police system, the education system, housing system, we can go on for it forever. Mm. But he did say yeah, that we as the community we need to find our own solutions we need to create our own solutions mm. and I'm, I'm not saying it's, 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 that, it's that easy 
100 percent right. But I definitely do feel like a lot of black people, um, including myself, in this, we don't recognize our own strength. Mm. We we don't we don't recognize the power we have in our community and in our units and in ourselves. I mean, like I, a great example. I told I told H. I said this too. I told, I told H. I was like H. Why don't we go back to schools and chat to people from our, from our ends about like how they can do things in the sports industry, or become an engineer. Like why why don't we do that? H was like to me. He was like. If I can say it, he was like, fam, like, I'm not where I want to be. Like, I'm not that good. Like, who am I to talk? But I was like, bro, like, what you've accomplished so far and where you are now, people will beg to know that. Yeah, so, 100%. Say. And I feel like that's same my other boys in acting, my other boy who's in the music industry. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, you may not be where you want to be personally, but where you are right now, people don't think they can get there. Yeah. I can remember an example where I was at ends one time and one of my boys was like, oh, yeah, but what do you do? And I was just like, yeah, I'm an engineer, aerospace engineer. And bear in mind, I was just still in uni then. He was just like, bro, we can do that. You know what I'm trying to say? People, some people, lack of, knowledge. lack of awareness. And that's why we're doing a podcast. Mm-hmm. Get me shout out to the, the podcast. Like, yeah. we're out here to spread awareness. Spread, <laughs> exactly. spread, um, no, but even to add to spread. what you've said, like, like uh, even in my uni experiences, like, I've sat down and spoke to people that you, you're around a day to day. And mm. it's like, things like uni was not, boasted in the ends like yeah. people didn't talk about uni so they felt like uni is not party. adapting like why am i going to uni and, and uni, uni was for studying stuff no, like, <laughs> no <laughs> <one> <laughs> please and it's sad, like, it's but that's like, you though isn't it that's you yeah. don't say like a lot of people think why am i going to uni like if i could kind of get what I want, there's always a way around it i'm just like sometimes my dad's always said knowledge is power Hundred. yeah and my, i've yeah. always said and that's always something that I've, I've embedded in me i've always said knowledge is power and there's no such thing as every knowledge you learn, like it, it adds something to your life, whether yeah. you like it or not. Mm. But it's so crazy that you speak to people from ends and they're telling you like, wow, like there's only like two men that's graduated from you. Yeah, I'm trying to say, this is against it, us. And, and it also there. goes back to where you're from as well. Like I've always said, I feel like if I lived, continue to live in London, so when I lived in Bristol, I think my life would be different because in Bristol, I in had opportunities. Way, good, mm. The awareness is there. opportunities and awarenesses that are very, very different to... Um, a lot of the people that are in London, I see. So it would you say London family. people who live in London live in a bubble? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Not even a kind of hundred percent. It's not even just the bubble. It's the mm. area that you live in. I'm telling you, I've never thought it, but I felt like I think it's it, an it, area. I think it depends what area though, because no, I don't think I live in a no, bubble. No, but I'm telling you. I, 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 Every, from when you're talking to people that have grew up on ends, you know, there's some people that have grew up. Mm. They know everyone from the eldest to the youngest. Mm. And they're telling you, everyone's telling you, I only know about one person that went to uni. You start to realise, how the hell do you just know one person in your whole borough that went to university? But I think that that's changed scary. now, though. No, I, 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 think, I, I, now, I think now, I think now there's I, a lot of people who can say that, how many people I, I, have I, I, I'm saying it from coming from somewhere like Bristol. Bristol, mm. yeah, for me, I've seen, I've seen a lot more in terms of even opportunities. Mm. Bristol does have a lot of indirect um Racism. not indirect I'm, I'm so sorry I've got cut up here because the thing I've got to say is this year like from somebody from ends who's now gone to Bristol mm. yeah like I can recognise the privilege I had in London because I went to a black primary school I went to a black secondary school I went to a black college it was only in uni I was mm. actually like oh wow I'm actually the minority here mm. you know what I'm trying to say so I was very much in a bubble mm. and I'm so and it's, it's a situation where it's like when I talk to people outside of London that's when I hear a lot more racism Direct, direct oh, no, 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 there's not, there, I'm not that's disregarding that there's not racism, but I feel like, obviously, it's not more direct example, outside of London. For example, like, I grew up in, in Bristol, if you know what Eastern is, Eastern is predominantly Somalis. Somalis, yeah. Mm. If not Somalians, Jamaicans, Bristol, Somali, know, Somali. Somali, sorry, I'm so sorry. Somalis and Jamaicans, because Bristol was built, a lot of the time, Somalis, the easiest way was to come Bristol and Jamaicans, the easiest way for them to come was through Bristol. So they're like the foundation of Bristol. So even when I... In the black community. In the black community. So for, it's like when I went to school, the the majority that I seen was Somalis and, and actual Caribbean. Jamaicans. Or well, Jamaicans, I didn't really meet Caribbeans. It was mainly Jamaicans that I knew. So coming from that, I kind of grew up in a space where I, I was, you know, a little bit of Caribbean there, a little bit of African there. Like I kind of had the... The, 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 the joy of the best of both worlds in a way. But it's like, in terms of like education and stuff, like I'm not going to lie to you. If I compare it to the ratio of the people that I know in London, mm. a lot of the people education wise in Bristol that I know of or that was a part of my circle have like graduated and gone to uni and seen the opportunities that come with it. Whereas when I compare it to the London guys, there was a bit like, 
there was more kind of like on other routes or they took kind of like going into road life or doing a little bits here and there for them to kind of get where they are. And that's when I started to realize maybe it's something to do with the area that you're from as well. And when you speak to people, especially when you go to somewhere like uni, you meet different types of people with different types yeah, of ends. Yeah, mindset as well. But you realize they kind of have kind of like the same type of mindset is that, yeah, you can go to uni and you can potentially go great. Or you but can. I, I've, I've, no, I've known someone on the road life who came to uni and they did. Oh, I don't, think, I don't, think, I don't the, think we're discriminating that. I, I think what we're trying to say is just like, what I think what you're trying to say, correct if I'm wrong, it's like when you do leave ends and when you do meet other people, your mindset changes. And, and I'm an example of that because my activism started when I got into Bristol and I started becoming into the certain crowds. You know what I'm trying to say? My activism didn't start ends. None of my boys, you know, none, none of us are act- activists. None of us are. And it was so mad, yeah. I talked to H one time. And it was like, but bro, you're an activist. I'm not. And that spun me a little bit because I was like, bro, like, I'm fighting for a cause for all of us. But he seems an Wait, activist now. It, mm, yeah, you know what I'm trying I to say? But, like but opportunities and also the we- awareness. Like the awareness in Bristol, I def- for me, that's what I'm saying, because I could only talk about the life that I've lived Bristol and London, do you get it? And I feel like in Bristol, there was more awareness. There is a more awareness. But there's more projects as well. It, but the ra- what I'm trying to say, but the racism didn't stop. Like even me, me, even in my workplace, I was the only black girl and I was the only black female. So there was already two things. I was the only female and I was the only black girl. And it was like, it was little things like in my workplace, cause I worked in a phone shop, a black person would come in, they start looking at the fraud, the fraud things. Oh, you know what, you need to be careful. That person might be doing fraud. But when you talk to that person, you actually understand. When I'm talking to that person, I don't see fraud. I actually see a person that's actually here to come and get a phone. So it's like, it's little things like that made me realize that really and truly the ma- the color of our skin plays a big impact no matter where you are. So even the fact that I I don't believe, oh, you can speak white or you can speak black. I generally think you can speak how you speak in it. Like, obviously, there's the whole, there's a the slang. Everyone has that. But I don't, that's a lot of the time, people that's just cotton think, English. oh, you're a bit different. You speak a bit formal. I'm like, what? I don't speak formal. I speak, edu- that's how an educated person speaks. That's it. And everyone speaks slang. I said, listen, the same way I'm talking to you right now, I can switch it up. But it's a choice. I talk educated because I wanted, uh, I'm an educated person. I choose to speak the way mm. that I want to speak and I choose to be the way that I am because I want to be like that. But I don't like the fact that people, a lot of the time as well, because I was a lighter skin, mm. a lot of the times it's just like, yeah, but you're like lighter. So, you know, and I'm just like, what does that even mean? What does that mean? Because there's a lot of colorism as well in the workplace. A lot of the time it's like, I've been asked, are you sure you're not mixed with something? No, I'm not.